Hey, we're back. We're hands on diecast. I'm EC. Kevin here. And today we're reviewing our very first BBR. Yeah, this is this is quite a monumental event. I mean, BBR is like the brand to get. Yep. Uh, our first review. My this so this is my model. My own very very first BBR. Never had one before. Um, the Ferrari F12 TDF. Yeah. Uh, interesting tidbit. The TDF actually stands for Tour de France, which most of the us the cycling know. thing, right? Uh, that's what I thought as well. <laughs> Obviously not. Uh, so it's a legendary endurance road race that Ferrari dominated in the 1950s and 60s. So this pays homage to that. Okay, so let's see how well BBR uh, paid tribute to the model. Or yeah, to the and, actual car. I mean. And a die-cast version. So. Okay, let's get yeah. to it. Starting off with the front of the F12 TDF. This is an exciting model to review because it's a BBR. Not just any BBR, but a die-cast one. Um, so starting off, if you look at the, the emblem here and here, very well executed positioning and detail is good. The mesh is also highly, like this honeycomb structure looks accurate to the real thing. If you look right through, you can see the radiator as well. Um, as for the carbon fiber detailing, they look pretty good to me. Um, can't really fault them. The headlights, uh, daytime running lights, um, as well as the, what do you call that? The high intensity bulb one. I forgot what it's called, but yeah. The HID the, bulb. Yeah, HID, the main <laughs> main beam also looks good. Um, no complaints there, meshing up here as well. Um, and the paint, you can really see the flake in there, which is really, um, I mean, when you shine the light through, it looks really amazing. There's also like some detail here, if you look really closely, like the um, parking sensors, but it looks like the paint has obscured it because of the thickness of the paint. There's yeah. an odd square thing right here on both sides, which I don't know what that is either. Light washers maybe? Really? Oh yeah, that, that could be it. Interesting, mm. yeah. Um, that's uh, about it for me. Yep. Uh, again, very interesting because this is our first BBR model to review, that we are reviewing. Yeah. Paint is very good. I do like the very deep sparkle on, you know, the, the yellow, at least the trademark yellow yeah. finish yeah. for the TDF. So that's really, really nice. Um, the meshing work, I would say, is good. I won't say necessarily that it's better than what we've seen on auto art. I, I think the mesh is, is, is on a similar level of quality right. based on what right. I've seen. Um, the carbon fiber details, mm. right? So here is very clearly, these are, are, are it's, it's a decal, yeah. right? All yeah. on the front of the model. It is more fine. It is more refined, more 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 detailed, if you will, yeah. than than auto art. Yeah, that's, I agree. That's definitely one one detail. It's not textured plastic. It's which every, not. Everybody is complaining about apparently <laughs> in the comments. Yeah, everybody hates that. The headlamp detail is good. I think the detail around the main projector lamp is definitely better than what we've seen on auto art. Uh, so far. Emblems are good as well. Yeah. Uh, like you said, it feels a little bit more refined. I am a bit surprised about two things. One, there is a little bit of overspray, hmm. um, you know, down on the front lip um, behind the carbon fiber canard. We'll get a close up uh, to show that to you. Right. And the second thing is the shot lines, as well as the headlight washer piece. Hmm. It's, they got a bit lazy with the molding, right? The front yeah. bumper molding, it's just. It's, 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 I don't know. There's no. There's a lack of detail there, I, 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 which I'm quite surprised by. As well as the the headlamp washer, I believe. Not that you mentioned. Yeah, this panel gap where the front bumper joins yeah. with the fender. Yeah. It's different from the back. Exactly. This looks not as uh, realistic. Exactly. So that that's a bit of a surprise for me. Hmm. Um, but other than that, yeah, you know, the meshing work on the bonnet looks good, and uh, yeah. Cool. Other than that, the, the the panel lines, I, I think it's a good running. Cool. Um, now to the side. Yeah, <laughs> of the model. Uh, can I just say this is a damn good looking car. Yeah, <laughs> those shoulders, man. <laughs> I, I, I love the F12 TDF. So um, just to be clear, so this is not the, so this is the second, um, you could call it like a reissue of the F12 TDF by BBR. Right. The first version had silver rims. Mm. This one has gray rims. Right. right. I think that's one key difference. Um, so anyway, what do I see on the side? Um, well, Hmm, I mean, it's quite interesting. Again, you get a very nice view of the paint. I think BBR has captured the overall shape of the body very, very well. Um, you know, you have the details around the front. I don't know what on earth you call it, the arrow bridge kind of thing. Um, basically, from the bonnet that goes down, the channels there across to the side of the doors. You know, I think they did a pretty good job there. And you can see a lot more detail, um, you know, on how they are approaching carbon fiber finishing, right? It's very different to auto art. Um, I think it's a little bit better still than auto art, but I won't say drastically so. 
Um, there's some other nice details as well. The keyhole. It's a nice actual keyhole. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that as well. I was going to point that out. But okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's some nice details. The keyhole is a nice detail. Even the side indicator is an actual plastic lens, right? Yes. Which you tend to see auto art or other manufacturers might use a decal, for instance. Mm. Um, I'll hand over to you first. What do you think? I think, like, like you said, the shape, the profile of the shoulders and this whole side just looks amazing. Um, the other thing is the... The fender gaps on the front and back look pretty accurate to the real thing. The wheel offset's good as well. Um, only sad part is no tire branding yeah. on all the tires. I mean, come on, BBR. Auto, I mean, auto art does that nowadays. So you're right. Like, yeah. The keyhole, like you said, that was impressive. Usually, I mean, they just dab a, a bit of silver paint on the like embossed surface, but this is a real keyhole, so that's nice. Interesting thing I noticed is the um, turn signal indicator on this side. It's more recessed than on the other side. Really? The other side, the plastic lens actually sticks out a little more. So that looks like a little QC issue. And oh. to be honest, this is like flush right now. I think it should stick out a little bit more. Mm. Um, and then now you also can see the, the gaps that we were talking about earlier, how this and this compares. This is definitely better. Uh, yeah, it looks more realistic. Yeah, yeah. Um, other than that, the rims. Yeah, not... We're going to talk about the rims and the brakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go, please. There's go. so much to go through on this model. This might be a long one, but I don't like the rims. I think they are a bit plasticky. Yeah, um, I agree. The, of course, there is, BBR did some things very well. The Ferrari emblem in the rim itself and of course on the side of the car. That is beautiful. The emblem work is really, really good. The, the detail on the rotors and the calipers, I think that's good as well. Yeah. But again, if I'm comparing it to other art, is it necessarily better than what I've seen on other art? I don't think so. Hmm. Rims to me definitely is a bit of a shame. Maybe the first gen might have been better, I don't know. But I'm a bit disappointed with the rims. Really? Yeah, I think I kind of agree. I mean, the, the rotors and calipers look fine to me. Um, I don't think they're necessarily better than Auto Arts. The rims, actually, I think Auto Art probably would have done a better job. This one does look plasticky, like yeah. you said. I mean, they tried to get this gray color, but somehow it just doesn't... I mean, it, it doesn't look right somehow. Mm. Uh, but yeah, otherwise... Otherwise, last thing is the trademark TDF uh, meshing. The three gills yeah. of the rear view, that is. That's nice. That's yeah, nice. that's nice. Proportional and everything. Hmm. Cool. Let's move on. Onto the back of the F12 TDF. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a lot going on. I mean, there's <laughs> a lot of like details to, to look at. Yeah. Um, just the design of the model. Uh, it's, it's cool. I mean, I, we both looked at the images on Google of the real car. It matches up pretty decently well. A couple of things that I don't really like are the exhaust tips. Um, I mean, the images I saw are chrome. I mean, even if they're not chrome um, and they're supposed to be in this color, it does look a bit plasticky and mm -hmm. fake. Um, diffuser and carbon fiber work is still very well done. Rear lamp cluster as well as I presume these are the fog lamps or reflectors. Yep. Uh, they're well done as well. Uh, no complaints there. This whole bar that goes across there is not supposed to be meshing there. It's just carbon fiber. It's correct. Yeah. Um, this one here, I mean, this... Uh, I think this is like a light cluster for the reverse or something. Uh, but below it, there's supposed to be a dot of maybe it's a reverse <laughs> camera or a sensor. It's missing that here. It's just blank. They, yeah. they got lazy. The rear parking sensors on these are actually better than on the front. I mean, you can actually see them. Mm. Um, well, that's about it from me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the exhaust um, is, is not, not just a finishing, it's shallow. Yeah, oh, that's right. It should stick out more than this. Uh, no, as if you look into the pipe, you know, oh, right. we have other models where I think like yeah. was it the uh, like the one one to one uh, a few others right, but auto art. You look straight into the pipe, you can actually see mm. there's a bit of depth. Um, I I mean yeah, like you said, I think the carbon fiber printing is still good. Um, the way they executed the rear diffuser is nice. The detail um, around the meshing again, that's nice too. Um, the lamp cluster, I actually am not too impressed really? by. Really? Which yeah. one? Uh, the main lamp cluster, the okay. circular one with the indicator lamps and blah blah blah. I, right. I, I mean, it's okay, it's not bad by any means. It's, I just, I don't know, maybe I'm approaching this with just a bit too high expectations. Maybe. You know, as, as I look at it, it's kind of, yeah, it's alright, you know, but it's not like, whoa, it's not blowing me away. Yeah, right? you want to you wanna see all the LED dots like on the real car? Maybe, I don't yeah. know, but I mean, it's okay, it's not a bad effort. Um, the emblems is, is, again, the Ferrari emblem is, is nice, um, and you see that on the, the rear hatch as well, right? Right. Um, you know, it's a proper 
emblem, right? It's not a sticker, right? You can tell that's a, what, what do you call that? It's basically, it's, it's, it's metal plated of sorts. Yeah. Um, and it's straight. And it's straight. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you have the um, the rear demisting, whatever you call that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's well done. And the fuel cap. Yeah. I, I think that's a nice detail. It's good to see that the fuel cap is a separate piece. Um, so, yeah. I, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, man. It's All right, like, next. Now, on to the engine bay. Yep. Um, now, this is going to be interesting because I think almost well, most of the models that we've reviewed in the past, we've always poo pooed the engine bay. And the interior. <laughs> and the interior. Yeah. So, will this, you know, is this going to be the best of the lot? Let's see. Um, but anyway, one thing that's going to strike you when you look at this model, uh, the F12TDF engine bay, there's tons of carbon fiber. Yeah, lots. Everywhere, right? Because you can see, like, what, what was this? 6.3 liter V12. V12. Front mid motor layout is pushed so far back. So, you know, where the air box is, you have a lot of, you know, BBR has a lot of opportunity to, uh, you know, show off their carbon fiber finishing technique. I think this is the first time I've actually seen meshing <laughs> in an engine bay, yeah. which is a good detail. Again, I think where BBR really shines is the details of the emblems and the details and all the stickers. Yep. I know you love stickers. Wow, they're important, right? To make it look real. <laughs> um, so that's definitely a big plus point. There is depth to this engine bay. Um, what I don't really like, I think the central, um, gosh, what is, basically the central part of the engine, the silver, the silver painted bit between the two red sections, the cam headers, I think, yeah. that looks a bit plasticky. I think the red itself uh, and, and the uh, pipes that lead to the air box, I think that's pretty accurate. Uh, the red section, I think the real car looks like this too. Yeah, um, yeah I'll stop here, what do you think? Uh, pretty similar to what you had to say. I'll just add on a couple of things like this emblem right here. Very good. Very well done. That's yeah. a metal emblem. It's not a decal. Um, all the other decals are fine. This one had some paint over, over, over spray, spray over, over run. Yeah, over dip. <laughs> and there's some minor glue stains around here, but I'm really nitpicking. I mean, if you went to this level with an auto art, you'd find the same problems. Then again, auto art is cheaper though. It is cheaper. Um, the red speckled, I think I'm not sure why it's called speckled finish on the covers um they're true to the real ferrari so good job with getting the textures right like you said this center section um yeah i don't know what that is called yeah. someone please tell us in the comments we don't mm -hmm. know enough about the ferrari engines um yeah it looks plasticky uh there's no doubting that um, but everything else the carbon fiber work especially in all these complex shapes very impressive. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the hinge work too. Let's not forget the hinges. I was just about to mention the hinges yeah. because that's the elephant in the room. Yeah. If you look carefully at the hinges, it's a combination of very nice hinge work mm -hmm. with horrible dog legs. <laughs> dog legs. Which I think on the first edition, um, I, I think there was a lot of controversy, right? When yeah. The first edition of the BBR F12 TDF had humongous um, dog legs. It didn't <laughs> come with struts. This reissue, I think they've tried to address that somewhat, but hey, it still doesn't look great. For what this model costs, I think is, is what, about 400 over US dollars. I don't yeah. really think that's excusable, in, in my opinion. I don't know what you think. But I mean, what, what does a real car look like? So maybe the real car has dog hinges. Legs. It, it, has it doesn't have dog legs. It doesn't have okay. I'm pretty sure of that. All right. Yep. Okay. Then that's, that's not cool. Yeah. So that's that. All right. So. <laughs> the interior, yes. uh, very hotly contested yes. topic between the two of us because every single model that we've reviewed in the past, regardless whether it's Auto Art or GD Spirit, whether all interiors suck. Yeah, yep. <laughs> is this gonna be any better? The long and short of it, yes, I think so. I mm -hmm. think this could very well be the best interior. Sorry, this is the best interior of any model that we have reviewed. Is yeah. it the best of all time that I've ever seen? I don't know, but I think it's pretty close. Lots of nice details. Um, I don't even know where to begin. I, uh, I guess for a start, carbon fiber work, again, very nicely done. Um, I, I like the plastics. I like the, I, we know that it's made of plastic, right? It's, it's meant to simulate leather, but I think they've done a decent job in terms of you know trying to make it look realistic, the yellow stitching. I think that's okay. I think that's a decent effort. I think what's really a standout feature is um, things like the aircon vents, you know, the red finishing around the aircon vents, the fact that the aircon vents have detail within them. I think that's, that's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I like how all of the very, very small details, the buttons, you know, like 
the, the, the Ferrari steering wheels with the indicator buttons and the, the Manito switches and whatnot. Manatino. Uh, Manatino, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Uh, all of that, really, I, I'm very amazed that they managed to incorporate all of that. Um, so, um, and even like on the passenger side, you get to see details of the co-driver panel, you know, uh, and the TFT screens as well, right? You, you actually can see some nice detail on the speedometers and the screens of the side. So yes, I, I like it. I do like it. What do you think? Uh, pretty much like what you said, this is an impressive interior. Um, I mean, I don't know if it's the best of everything we've reviewed. I think some of the older auto arts are pretty good as well. Uh -huh. But for the models of late, this definitely wins. Uh, definitely wins. Um, I'm really impressed by actually the stuff uh, on the floor, which is the funny. The steel kick plates. Yes, the steel <laughs> kick plates yeah. at the end, um, the accelerator brake, pedals. Footrest, yeah. Oh, yeah, the footrest. Um, yeah. The, the everything down there, I mean, all the metal looks really intricately detailed. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen any model with such well-designed uh, uh, floor plates and kick plates and pedals. Yeah. Um, the material, uh, the plasticky looking material is okay. It's well done here. The matte finish is well executed. The carbon fiber uh, work is well um, distinguished from the uh, exterior carbon fiber work there's like a sort of satin matte finish to it compared to the glossy one on the exterior of the car so that's good the stitching um the leather stitching detail they put they always other manufacturers always seem to get it wrong they make the stitchings like the gap too big or each thread's too out thick. of scale yeah. yeah out of scale this looks pretty well done i mean as good as it could get on a 118. um small things to nitpick at i would say is the fire emblem on the steering wheel <laughs> as well as the speedometer they're both um counterclockwise too much they need to be really yeah okay, they need I didn't to be clockwise <laughs> another like five degrees or so um another nitpicking detail would be the f12 tdf emblem on the passenger side it's like a water slide sort of metal decal but then surrounding it's all glossy whereas the actual material of the dashboard is supposed to be matte so that's kind of a small detail they overlook because of the the edging was all glossy yeah um, but everything else really really even seats. the door sill plates yeah, yeah. seats mm. all well executed i mean very little to complain about i'm really nitpicking here yeah the door sill plates is nice the seats we haven't actually talked about the seats i right. think they are okay they're not the they're not fantastic seats right but it's very nice to see that the carbon i mean these are carbon shelled you know at the back mm -hmm. right these seats are carbon shelled at the back and then mm -hmm. and bbi actually got that detail in and there's nice proper fabric seat belts as well which is very very hard to see but <laughs> yeah. yeah overall i would say i am i like this interior i'm impressed by it so far strongest point of the model so far yeah i, I mean i just noticed while you were talking that the door door poles are also of a different texture material really? or decal that's on it to distinguish it from the rest of the door card that's cool. impressive very cool cool right, onto the trunk of the f12 tdf not much to see here but they still got the details right um, if you look at the black surround that goes around, um, that is well done, accurate to the real car. Uh, the hinge catch um, down here looks accurate. The luggage tie-down belts, as well as the rails, um, are well done. Parcel shelf, you open it up, um, there's the light, there's a luggage hook at the bottom, as well as a decal here. Um, yeah, there's not much to say here. And then, of course, the hinge work is, is pretty good on the back, except for the dog legs, which I'm not sure what the real car looks like. Um, but not much else to say here, yeah. Uh, you've covered it all. Yeah. I, I, I think one thing that we see about BBR, they love their stickers. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, even Ottawa gets more stickers done, right? So. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's... Yeah. What the, the, the blingiest part of this entire trunk is the little silver catch for yep. the rear hatch. And that's it. Yep. Mm. Cool, let's move on. Right, conclusion time. Mm -hmm. Our first ever BBR review. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see what score you're gonna give this. Uh, this one, it's, I, I took a bit of time to think about it. So I think this model is impressive. Right. Um, I think it's, first of all, it's a very cool car, right? The mm -hmm. F12 TDF is a dream car for many. Uh, many people won't even get to see one. I haven't seen, no, I have seen one in real life uh, at Goodwood. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so anyway, BBR did a lot of things right with this model. Uh, the paint, 
Mm -hmm. It's actually very good, right? Yep, it's, yep. it's hard to come on with camera. Actually, you can see a little bit. The flick is really, really good. Um, you know, the fact that it's full metal die cast, I think that's definitely another plus point. Mm -hmm. um, the quality of the model overall, quality, when I'm, talk I'm talking about in terms of how it feels, right? Mm -hmm. the, the mechanisms, the opening mechanisms, everything feels good. The engine and interior, I think, are what really stands out on this model. Yeah. Um, really like all of that detail. Possibly, you know, I, I might say that it's better than, you know, most, if not all of the auto arts or any other high-end models I've seen before. Yeah. Um, emblems was something that was really, really good as well. All of the emblem and, and decal work, uh, including the carbon fiber, I think that was really strong as well. However, <clears throat> I am surprised that BBR, you know, decided to slack off on certain things, mm -hmm. like the rims. I mean, come on, these rims really don't justify you know it is it, it's hard to to square the price with you know the the, the rims of this model i i don't like that the dog legs on the front bonnet blah, that's still unacceptable yeah. to me yeah that's really unacceptable to me um but all that said and done i have to remember that this model if you compare this to to to, to auto art prices of today you're talking maybe it's about 60 to 80 us dollars more then you know say let's say in the auto art regera mm. called exact regera yeah so is it really 60 to 80 dollars worth you know is, is it worth that little bit of a premium i think it's okay it's not definite it's not definite yes mm -hmm. but i think it's it's it's, it's reasonable so all yes. of that said that Please, i know you can't wait it. it's yeah. an 8.5 really it's an 8.5 wow that surprised me i thought you were gonna give it a 9.5 no it's an 8.5 wow. it's not a 9.5 because all of those things that i said so anyway that's this, me what, what about it's a big surprise well i mean i actually was gonna say a lot of things that you said i was disappointed with the uh, rims um the lack of tire branding i mean that really yeah. does help a model like look more real especially when you do close-up photography and stuff um the hinge work like you mentioned the the regera i mean the last video we did is so fresh in our memory yeah and the hinge work on there i mean oh, just think about the Google. yeah the engineering that goes into each movement yeah it's not easy i mean there are, i credit goes to auto art for the amount of effort and engineering they put into making each hinge work the way it does um no easy feat and this one on the other hand costs more than the auto art yeah uh, but the hinge work just isn't quite there. I know this is BBR's like, you know, first few attempts at a die cast, so granted, um, it's not going to be perfect. But still, the price is more, so we're expecting auto art oh, yeah. Yeah, plus. It's like, oh, a, well, it's plus. Like, yes, yeah, yes, it's like an auto order. art plus, so yeah. it's like a level up from their signature. But uh, it still doesn't feel that way. There's a lot of nice touches though, especially the carbon fiber work, which is definitely better than auto art. The interior and engine bay, definitely stands out as better and there's mm. a lot of the metal work like the metal emblems the metal kick plates these really stood out to me to be a step above auto art yep. um, but if you balance the pros and the cons uh, i can't justify giving this a higher score than the highest score i've given to an auto art so i'm giving this a nine out of Whoa. ten yeah <laughs> this was a, i thought you were gonna give the higher score than me it, it turned out the other way around yeah. this was a big surprise uh, I, I am surprised too yeah so but I think the bottom line is I would recommend. Yeah, this same model. here. I mean, what? Um, who else makes a F12 TDF? No. Anyways, yeah. So. It, it, it's a it, it's a very good model. It's something that you would definitely enjoy. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. Um, hope you enjoyed this review. Hope yeah. you found it useful. And as always in these unusual times, um, do stay tuned. And of course, um, take care. Yeah, and leave comments too. We always like to hear, like, especially about the carbon fiber work in the auto art. We were surprised by the number of comments that came in on that. So that, haters. Yeah, so we learned from that. So please do let us know, especially if you have this model, uh, what you think about it. Yeah. All right, till All right. next time. Till next time. Bye. Bye.